my channel if you are new here my name is Yannick thank you so much for joining me if you are returning thank you so much for joining me again and thank you for sticking around so in today's video I will speak about six apps that are must-haves if you are planning to move to China so work or to study in a university so let's get into the video so the first app is WeChat. So WeChat is a messaging app. To me, it is like the Chinese version of WhatsApp. So you can send picture messages, regular text messages, you can send voice messages, and you can also send files. WeChat goes beyond just messaging. In WeChat, you can post moments just like you would post stories on Instagram. You can also use WeChat to top up your phone. You can use WeChat to purchase movie tickets, train tickets, plane tickets, and book hotels. And then you can also use it to purchase food. In WeChat, you can also transfer money to your friends. The major purpose that we use WeChat for is to make payments. So China is not a completely cashless country, but more and more it is evolving into a cashless country. So instead of us walking around with cash and credit cards all the time, we just pay with our phones on WeChat. The next app is Alipay. So Alipay and WeChat are similar. The only difference is Alipay is an actual online and mobile payment platform. But you can also send messages, purchase movie tickets, purchase train and plane tickets, book hotels, order food and top up your phone using Alipay. So these two apps are pretty similar and then we use both of these apps, WeChat and Alipay, to make payments. Next app that I'll talk about is VPN. So a VPN is a virtual private network. So you may or may not have heard about the Great Firewall of China. Great Firewall of, Wall of China blocks all our most foreign websites and all of Google powered apps. So China kind of filters out the outside information from getting into China. So because of that, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Google browser, Google Maps, those, they do not work in China. The only way they can work is if you have a workable VPN. So a VPN is like a jailbreak in order to use all these websites and apps that are blocked in China. There are several different VPNs around. There are, they are, there are some paid ones and there are some free. Internet VPN is free but it started to give a lot of problems so i just deleted that express vpn is a paid vpn it also started to give me a lot of problems and i deleted it so over time in china you will go through several different so currently the vpns that i use are luna luna vpn and super unlimited proxy which both are free and they work really well for me. I, I won't lie, they do have their ups and their downs, but for the most part, they work completely fine for me. The next app that, oh, before we get to the next app, for your computer, you still also will not be able to use the Google browser, so you will also need a VPN for that. There are several different ones. The one I use, is actually a browser it is called epic privacy browser so once you use that browser you are able to use YouTube and Google 
on that browser so the next app that I must have in China is a navigation app so you will need some kind of map there is the Baidu map which it works well but the only thing is it is in Chinese and there's also Google Maps which I had to but Google Maps is not very not very accurate here in China and one thing about Google Maps yen yeah, has to be on in order for you to use Google Maps so that I currently use is Apple Maps so if you have an iPhone Apple Maps is a really good option it is accurate and it takes you exactly to the location that you want to get to it does not only tell you the distance from your location to the location that you want to get to but it also tells you if there are public transportation available from your location to your destination so if I'm at point A and I want to get to point B it tells you the bus that goes to that location from your point from point A and it tells you the bus number you should take and it also tells you how, how often the bus passes so that's good and if you have a subway in your city as well then it also tells you which line on the subway to take and all of that jazz so Apple Maps is pretty good another feature of Apple Maps it is a it is that it allows you to call a taxi directly from the app so the next app is the Diddy app so just like in America, there is Uber and in Jamaica, we have on time and those taxi services. Diddy is the Chinese Uber. So it is a very good app. You just need to put your location in. It pinpoints where you're, where, where you're at and then you just need to put in the destination and then it allows you to call a taxi. To that destination so it is pretty good the only thing with the Diddy it is more expensive because if you take a in my city if you take a bus to your location to your destination it is one yuan which converts to 21 point something Jamaican dollars so approximately 22 Jamaican dollars so it is pretty cheap but if you're going to take a Diddy depending on the distance it would come up to a, a, a larger amount of money for example I went to we went to the other side of my city the other day and we took the bus it was like an hour and like 15 minutes to get there and it was literally just one new and 22 Jamaican dollars but if we had taken the Diddy taxi service to that location, it would be like 60 yuan, which is a lot more money, like probably a thousand something Jamaican dollars. So the Diddy app is a must. Another app that you will need in China is a translator. Seeing that most foreigners do not speak Chinese, in order to get around, a translator is needed. Even if you're going to learn Chinese, for the first couple months you will definitely need to are the first year you will definitely need a translator mm -hmm. so the translator that I use is Microsoft translator it is pretty good you can type in your English and it gives you the Chinese if you need to text someone back you can speak into your translator in English or in Chinese or whatever language and it it translates for you and you can also take photos and translate if there is a picture that you need to translate there's a sign that you need to translate or anything like that you can just take a picture and then translate using the app there is also Google translator I had it when I just got here but I didn't really like it so I deleted it and you have to use your VPN in order to use that app the final app that you will need if you are a foreigner in China in China is Taobao 
So Taobao is like the Chinese Amazon. So it's basically the Chinese Amazon. You can literally get almost everything on Taobao. This app though is in complete Chinese. So when I got here, someone had to put my address in the app. But once you get, once you use it a couple times, you will get used to it and you won't have any problems. But even though it's a Chinese app, you can enter the item that you're looking for in English and you will find it. So if you want a sweater, you just type sweater in the search bar and you can you will definitely find sweaters even though it's in Chinese so once you get used to it you will, you're able to purchase with no problem you're able to return items with no problem you're able to ask for a refund with no problems so yeah Taobao is another most of app in China bear in mind that these are not the only apps there are plenty of other apps that you will discover along the way once you get to china but these are the ones that are really very important right now so guys we have come to the end of the video if you have reached this far thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy and i hope this video was informative i will see you in my next video thank you so much for the love and support bye lovelies